Hey there YouTube, this is Mr. Weissman4 and today you're watching another one of my programming tutorials. This is programming Android part 2 and this is going to go into just how to basically set up your Android file for the first time and how to actually use Eclipse to do that. So we're going to hop right in. I'm going to go right to the Eclipse program right here. Now if you don't know how to install this or where to get this at, I'm going to put a link in the description of this to my first video where it shows you how to install the SDK and get all that set up with your workspace and everything like that. So we're going to go right into Eclipse. You're going to click it. It's going to open. You've got your workspace. It's saving my work to user slash Tyler slash workspace. Go in here, click OK. And it's going to open and create your workbench and all that. And here's your program. This is the Eclipse editor. In here, here's all your program, like your application files you can program in Eclipse almost any language if you get the right SDKs and all of the um, compilers and stuff into the Eclipse folder but right now we have this one sp uh, specifically to do Java and to do Android and this programming tutorial is obviously about Android so I'm going to show you how to set that up so go up to the file right up here and you're going to go to new and you're not going to do Java project we're doing an Android project. You're going to do Android application project right here. You're going to click that. And this is going to bring up the new Android application screen. Now, in here, you're going to see your SDKs. And this SDK stuff is important. It's important for the lifetime of your application. If you're making an application to go up on Google Play and you're actually officially working on a real project and not just a tutorial, this is important. So pay attention. Minimum SDK. This is the minimum version of the Android operating system that can run your application you are making. I leave this around like 2.2. You can set it even lower than that. You can set it to 2.0 if you want and all that. But the difference is the lower you set this, the less of the built-in SDKs, widgets, and all the stuff that Android is so far built into itself, you're going to be able to code into your app. You're going to have to use more and more basic stuff so that it can run on everything than, say, stuff that's made, like, there's a lot of SDKs and API 11 stuff in the Android um, SDK now that you can do that auto pops up for you as you're coding. You're not going to be able to use any of that stuff if you do 2.2, but... From my own personal experience with my own app, the Don't Starve Survival Guide that I made up on Google Play, you don't want to do like just 3.0 because you're going to lose a lot of your target audience when you're trying to get people to install and download this project because as you like as people start to download it, everybody who has like version 2.0 or some older phone is not going to be able to use your app. So do like 2.2. 4.2, that's your target version. You want to always want to do this one kind of one lower than the most recent one and then compile with 4.3, which is the most recent. So always compile with the most recent version, target one below that. Hollow light and dark action bar. This is the standard. This is what it's going to look like. It's going to have a dark action bar with a light white background. You can change all this. I'll show you in a different video of how to actually edit the um, colors. You can just, just stick with hollow light and dark action bar. Application name. This is important. It says this is what's going to be shown on the Play Store. That is not actually accurate. When you go onto Google Play and upload your app for the first time, it will give you an option to name your app. It's supposed to be the same as your application name, but Google Play actually only allows you to put in 30 characters. So if you make some real long, obnoxious application name in here like I did on my one app, if you go on there and see, it says the unofficial Don't Starve Survival Guide, which is longer than 30 characters at the top of the app's name. On Google Play, it just says it's survival guide, don't starve. And it's because it didn't fit. So, we're going to do here, practice app 1. And it's going to auto-create the project name, practice app 1, which is going to be the folder name over here. Don't put any funky characters in there, like like uh, an apostrophe or something, because that's that will break it on export, and it won't export, and then you're going to have to go back and change all this stuff, and it's really complicated and annoying. So don't do that. And then your package name. Your package name is important. This right here cannot match any other program on the entire Android operating system. So if somebody else has a program that says com.example.practiceapp1 on the Google Play Store, guess what? Yours will not be allowed up on the Play Store, and it will not even install on your phone. So you're going to have to do something that's completely unique and completely different. The main standard is to take this middle part, this example, and do like, say like your initials, and then um, your company name, or games, or, or whatever you're doing. 
in there. So I'll just do TSW games and that would be fine. And then dot practice app dot one, the odds of you getting something that's exactly unique in every, I mean the same in every single character is not impossible. It's really hard to do. But the reason you keep this the same is that if you ever update your actual app, when you update it, this has to remain the same throughout the lifetime of your application. Otherwise it is considered a completely different application. So once this is set, leave it, don't change it. And you're going to see why in a minute it's auto placed into every Java file that you create in the app. So you don't need to go around messing with this. I'm going to click next. In here, the create custom launcher icon. Yeah, leave all this checked. That's where it's saving to. You can change this later if you want to and move the program files around. If you want to get it out of the workspace, that's fine. Click next. And for your icon launcher, I'm going to show you in this video how to change the icon launcher if you're interested. So image file, you go to browse. And here are a couple images. Now, Google has a weird standard with these images. It has to be a certain, like, style. They want it, like, kind of popping out of the screen, like, 3D-ish looking. Because this is the image that's going to be what you click when you want to open up your application on the phone. Like, like you know how, um, like, the Internet's, like, the little circle globe? It's one of those things. So we're going to pick, like, there you go. Two of them, um, clubs. You got the card image here. This is what it looks like on all the different screen sizes. So that's cool. You can change the padding, making it smaller, making it bigger, whatever you want to do with that. You can change the size of it, have a square behind it, a circle, change the background color if you want to do that. And you can do all kinds of stuff with this. But like I said, there are certain standards that it has to meet, otherwise they throw a um fit. So kind of make one. This is this is just subpar okay at this point because it's kind of a popping out thing like you see this like outline here. This would not really be a very good obviously image to use for an app. You'd want to design something a lot better than that or something more unique. But something like this and you'd want to use a PNG too because that can have an alpha channel in it to get rid of any background color. So like say this was a circle, a black circle and there was a white square behind it. If this was a JPEG it would show that white square on your thing. If it was a PNG it would not if you had an alpha channel in there. So we're going to go to next. And then um, blank activity, yep, that's fine. You can do these different. I've never messed with either of these two. I just always use a blank activity because that's the standard. Go to next, you can change that and send the app. And then the main activity. You can change this main activity name. This is the activity that's going to launch when the app launches. So I'm going to do um, launcher activity or, yeah. There we go. I'm, I'm going to do launcher activity and this is what's going to come up when the app launches and then the layout is how it's going to look and that's an xml files name this is it auto generates both of these for you to begin is you click finish it's going to create your project takes a second there you go this is what it's going to actually look like inside your app you can change the way this looks from in here using this button like you could throw a button in here and it would do all the code for you and you can link it to stuff this is really actually more confusing than it's worse. It's easier, in my opinion, to do it inside the code. So don't use this graphical layout. Do it in here. And in here is your actual XML file. It is the Android standard to lay things out with your XML file, like the way the screen is going to look, and do all the control and function inside the Java code. This is the relative layout. It is a standard layout when you create your app. Relative layout means that it is bases where text views and everything goes based on where something else is on the screen. I'm going to show you guys where the Java file is. So go up here to SRC, go to com, there's your TSW games, .practice app one go in here, and launcher activity.java. Same as your activity launcher. Go here. And now you have this stuff in here, all this stuff that's auto-generated. You see that package name we made earlier, that's up there already. You got your imports. And I always move these down because I like having my brackets lined up right and not doing that goofy, oh, this is out front thing and everything's underneath of there. I like it like that. And then you, this, I'm going to go over what some of this stuff means. So this is the Java file that starts when you click the application icon on your, on your desktop of your phone. You click it and it comes up. This is what happens. It ha you need this stuff in here whenever you create an activity. Well, you need this part. You need the override and this. These two, th these, this stuff right here is important because what this is is this is the on create function. This runs when this activity is created or when this activity is fired so you need this in your very first activity your launcher activity and that's what it knows to go to so on create bundle saved instance super dot on create saved instance and yada 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 so su super dot on create saved instance this basically means that it takes 
uh, basically all of the data that's created from this, like the layout of the screen and stuff, and saves it to a memory location on your phone so that if you hit back and then go forward again, it knows to bring it back up again in what you had. And then set content view r.layout.activity launcher. This is how it decides what your screen's going to look like. Now, set content view r.layout. Say I wanted this to look like a different layout and I had a different layout style in my layouts folder, like I do. I have activity 2.xml. What's the difference? Let me open it up and show you. Activity 2. Looks like this. There's no text view there. In this one, there we go. In this one, graphical layout, there is a text view. It says hello world. This one, there isn't one. Because there's no code for a text view in here, and it's also a linear layout. So, if I were to set this up, I could go r dot activity 2's in there, or activity launcher. I'm going to go activity 2. That would be fine. Save it now. Instead, when the acti when the app launches, it will launch using the Activity 2 layout instead of Activity Launcher and show the screen without the text view. So that's how, with every activity, you need to have a layout so that it knows what to show when that activity is launched. And I'll go into that in other videos as well. And then you have this Override Public Boolean on Create Options menu. This is the action bar. It is active through... I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Android 3.0 or higher. Anything lower than that cannot use the action bar. At least that's what I've noticed in my own applications that I've made. So if you're doing something that's targeting versions lower than 3.0, try and stay out of the action bar because what will happen is you can code stuff in here. People will still be able to use it, but anybody on 3.0 will be able to access the stuff that you put in the action bar and it just won't be there for people on anything lower, which sucks. So... You don't actually need this in here if you're not going to be using it. So what I'll do is I'll take this out. There won't be any like pop-up menu like that you can click in the top right corner and open up settings and it's like a blow-up menu and stuff. Okay, another thing I want to cover which is very important is generate a Java file folder. There are things in here that you do not want to mess with. Because what it does is it auto-creates an rjava and build config java for you. In here, this file, this is pointers to where all of your stuff is in the memory locations for this program. Do not mess with this. Leave it alone. You will have a very, 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 very bad day if you start changing things in here. Nothing will work. So leave it alone. As you create new XML files, as you create new Java files, it will update this for you. You don't need to change things in here. So stay out of that. And that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be making more like it if you guys have questions or things that you want to know about it or about Android and you want to know more about the specifics with this stuff, please let me know in the comments section, like if you liked it, and subscribe of course, I have another video on how to install Eclipse to begin with, I'm going to go in very de deep detail with some of this stuff, and especially what some of this code means, so you guys can actually learn about this stuff, and not just copy me like monkey see monkey do verbatim, and I'm going to go over how to put images in this stuff, and everything else, and how to get an application completely working on your phone, so I hope you guys enjoyed, thanks for watching YouTube, have a nice day.